It's doing it. It's like. Hello there and thank you for joining me for another video of 100 Days of Cubanitas, the challenge where we aim to learn something new related to Cubanese across 100 days. Now for those who are new to my face and my channel, my name is Anais. I first of all want to give a huge shout out to all those amazing community members who gave me so much love, support, amazing comments and feedback on my previous video. That was really kind of you. <laughs> so thank you for that. It was highly appreciated. If you want to get involved or if you have any questions or you want to share some amazing tutorials that you came across, you might want to join our Discord community that focus on DevOps and cloud and everything in between. It's really cool. They're amazing people. So what are we going to look at today? Well, in one of my previous videos, I first explained what is an ingress? How does an ingress work with a new Kubernetes cluster? And then in another video, I looked at service mesh. What is service mesh? Why would you use that inside of your Kubernetes cluster as well? And what's the difference between those two? Why would we want to use one over the other? Now you can check out those previous videos linked below if you're curious about the theoretical content and just how those things work. Now in the previous video, in the most recent video, I looked at how you can set up an ingress inside your Docker desktop cluster from A to Z. So you can follow that tutorial if you're curious on how to set everything up. Now, I promised I'm going to look at Istio and then LinkedIn as service mesh and how you can use them within your cluster and also show you the setup process. Now, the problem is Istio is quite difficult to use and the documentation is quite, oof, it's not working. <laughs> so instead of we all having to cry because nothing is working, I decided to take the burden on me and share with you how to do it. Now, this is not the last video that I'm probably going to do on Istio. There are probably going to be at least 10 more, so be prepared for that. But <laughs> let's get started with today's content. Like Notion page that's linked below, so check that out. If you're curious, if you want to follow the written version or want to follow along and want to have some reference guide. So here I'm basically providing further resources, similar to my previous Notion pages. You can find all of them linked. Anyway. Next, I'm detailing some further information on why you would use ingress over service mesh and basically the difference between using a load balancer and ingress. So with ingress and load balancer and no, with ingress and service mesh, you basically want to configure a common access point to all of your microservices. Versus if you use directly a load balancer, you have separate access point to each load balancer that you will have to configure separately. And that's quite complicated. So you wouldn't want to do that. Next, we're going into the installation. Now, I tried to set up Istio on top of a kind cluster. I'm not there yet, so that's going to be probably my next tutorial, or one of my next tutorials on how you can set up Istio on your kind cluster because kind Kubernetes in Docker clusters are really cool. So we're going to do that at some point. But for now, we're going to use Docker Desktop and we're going to basically first install Istiokl. Now, Istiokl is the command line tool for Istio. So you can follow this command. You can also have a look at the Istio documentation when you go to setup, get started, installation. That will guide you through how to, you can do that, basically. Now, I'm here on my terminal. Let's expand this a bit so you can see everything. And if I look for kubectx, I can see on my Docker desktop cluster. Now, Currently, there's nothing installed. Actually, we started it. So I have a blank cluster with nothing on it. Now, when I look for istiokl, I can see that I have access to the istio command line. Next, we will need their repository for the later installation. So we're going to go to cd documents and then istio. And I have within here, I have the istio example repository that has a lot of lot of different examples. Now we're here on the master branch. I'm just going to clean this up. And what we want to do next is on that cluster, we want to install Istio. Now we're going to do that through Istiokl and we're going to go ahead. And well, after you do that, you have access to Istiokl and we're going to basically follow this command. Now, You can provide a specific config file 
for Istio call Istio <laughs> um, to use. And you can specify the different profile that you want to use. Now, in this case, we are not going to use a specific file. We're just going to go ahead and install Istio based on the demo profile. So we're going to go ahead, open our terminal, and istiacl install set profile to demo. So we, it's going to ask us to confirm that that's what we want to install. And we're going to install all of the resources. Yeah? So this might take a few seconds to install. OK, it's doing it. It's doing it. It's like, Ooh. Be done <laughs> okay it's done awesome keep color get oh keep color get namespace so we have here our issue system namespace so now we want to wait until this is done and then we want to get our everything within the namespace is your system so we're going to look at that namespace. And as you can see, I have three different pods running, one for egress gateway. And the egress gateway allows us to further specify how we want people to access our services that are running within our cluster. Now, right now, we don't have any service or anything running. Then we have our ingress gateway, and that's similar. We can dive in one of the next videos into the different details when, once we explore Istio in further detail. And then we have Istio D and... Then we have some more services running. And as you can see, our ingress gateway connects to our local host and it's of type load balancer. Now, anything that enters our application or enters or requests access to our application will go in this case for the local host. So we will configure it in a second. And as you can see, we have several replica sets and deployments that happened also, well, compromise the entire resources that we need, comprise the entire resources that we need for issue. Now let's go back to my notes and we just did that. We had a look at all of the resources. Now you can also with this command, not with this command because it's a different profile. Well, you can set this to demo and then you can also, well, not with this, is to verify and then you can verify the install. So we could probably run that. Um, that's something I wanted to show you. So is Tiago verify install and it's going to verify that everything is installed properly. So we can just wait until it's finished. So as you can see, everything is installed nicely. Yay. Thumbs up to that. <laughs> now, once we have that, here is again, something that's specific to kind. So I'm probably going to break up the different documentation. So just ignore that for now. But next we want to say keep cuddle label names by default issue injection enabled. So basically that the issue resources can access the resources that we have within our default namespace. So we set a label to it so it can access it, it can reach it basically. Now, once you have done that, we're going to go ahead and we follow the documentation. Okay, so we're going to move now to the documentation and this sets up a booking application. So we're just going to follow this, all of it. So first of all, we want to, we just did that. We basically provide a sidecar injection. So you can read further about what that are, what they are from here. And now we want to apply this resource, right? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply this resource that's within this folder. So we can take a look at that in a second. So as you can see, it's deploying a bunch of different resources and deployments that are now within our cluster once this is all done. So we can have a look at our default namespace where all of this has been installed. And as you can see, it's just going to start the pods here. So we can have a look at the pods in a second and make sure they are all up and running. Now, in the meantime, let's have a look at this repository, right? Let's check out what's all within that. It's linked below, so you can just clone it and you can follow along. So I've opened that once before and we are here within the booking info networking namespace and we installed booking info platform cube booking info YAML. Okay, so we're in a platform cube platform booking info cube booking info yaml so we installed these resources so as you can see this is quite a huge file with different um, deployment and service resources that we just installed now let's have a look at kubectl get all 
make sure they are all running. Okay, so they are still initializing all the pods. So we can wait a few more seconds to make sure everything is set up properly and finished. Have a look at all of the pods and now they are all up and running. So awesome. Now we have that. Let's clear this up. And what are the next steps? Now we want to get the services, we want to get the pods. We've done that and now we want to check that our application is running properly. And this is something they did really well here because they allow you basically from this documentation to check that what you've just deployed before you move on to the next steps is actually already working. And so whenever you follow large documentation and several steps, in order to not get frustrated, you want to make sure you have like in between stepping points where you can check that everything you've done up to that point is working correctly because otherwise at the end you end up with a not working application and you don't know which of those different steps has gone wrong right so as you can see we get the right title returned as described in the documentation which is awesome once we have that we want to deploy the booking app gateway so we're going to use this booking app gateway, which is also within that repository. And the gateway just provides basically with the virtual service additional information on how through the ingress, issue ingress gateway users can access the application. So once we have that, we can go ahead and we can follow, well, we can confirm that the gateway is there. So it's there. Awesome. And then we can go ahead and follow these instructions to get our ingress Port, basically what the what we are going to use to access that application from externally so we're going to follow just these I'm just going to copy paste all of these to get the environment variables so this will take a few seconds and I will fast forward so in this case as you can see I'm using the external load balancer documentation but if you're using a kind class and you have configured the access between Istio, the Istio ports and the kind ports properly, then you will convert your load balancer that's trying to create on kind cluster into a node port. And I'm going to detail that in the next tutorial probably. And then you will follow the node port documentation on setting that access port IP. So now that we have that, we follow these instructions. We can go ahead and we expose our gateway URL. So we're basically just following their instructions, right? On how to do everything. So we're gonna set the gateway URL. And once this is set, we should be able to access our application again. But now it's like as if it's accessing it through our local host through external. So once this is all set up, as you can see, it's returning again, simple booking app, but now it's through the gateway, through the issue ingress gateway setup. So I can open my localhost and then it's product. What was it? Um, it was product page and I can access the product page from that application. So as you can see, this is our product page that we just installed. And that's basically what the documentation, what example the documentation does. And once we have that, once we have this basic page, let's say, we can expand into different, more complex examples. And that's what the next tutorials are going to do, as well as looking at different service meshes, such as Linkerd, that we can also set up instead. And through Istio, we can then configure additional routing and we can configure additional traffic distribution and all the fancy stuff in our cluster, which is really exciting. So as you can see, all I've done is basically follow the documentation and try it out whether or not it's working. Now, it took me some time to try to understand how it works on a kind cluster. So this will be a bit different. Uh, so that's why I want to basically make a separate tutorial about how to set it up because you will have to configure the kind config file to ensure that everything is working properly in connection with Istio. Now, as you can see, we have this page and also the next ones we are gonna set up custom applications. Now this is it for today. I hope it was useful. If it was, please do remember to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. Also, if you have any feedback, any comments, suggestions, either type them down below in the comment section, message me on Twitter or join our Discord community. I would love to hear from you. Also, I have a weekly DevOps newsletter where I share free online learning resources from across the space.
on a weekly basis, every Sunday, right to your inbox. Subscribe below. <laughs> anyway, I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.